What is up guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 build session. Today we are once again taking a look at the 7th Enclosure Exotic, which I know many of you now are probably getting sick and tired of it. However, I've got another fun one you'll probably like to play around with. This time round, we have a build where instead of using your fist, we can use the flaming hammer to do the job. And trust me when I say it, this one hammer packs a punch to those caught within it. What I'm going to show you today is a build that has been done in the past, but was limited in terms of effectiveness. The build could provide your hammer increased damage via ability kills and regenerate your health the moment you pick it up, while all round giving you an explosive finish against those caught from it. The build could provide your hammer increased damage via ability kills and regenerate your health the moment you pick it up, while all around giving you an explosive finish against those caught within it. Fun, and easily one of my top builds to play with, it allowed you to fully invest into the code of the Devastator in the best way possible. Now this build is being brought back, but even better than before, with new additions, mods, setups and a ton more synergy compared to the past. Like history doomed to repeat itself, our build won't end in a whimper, but instead with a loud boom against your targets upon impact. If that sounds great and you enjoy using the explosions to your advantage, then stick on by and I'll show you everything you need to achieve that. Before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then please do leave a like and a sub as it really does help me out. Starting off the subclass, we will be using the Code of the Devastator to access the Throne Hammer perk and the rest of the treeline perks it can offer us. Much of the build that I'm about to break down will sound or outright be similar to what I've done in the past, and that will be deliberate because of how flexible Severance is when built into the subclasses. Severance is what I would call a passive exotic, meaning no matter what subclass, mods, weapons or gear you have, the exotic will work as long as there is a powered melee available. Because of this, I wanted to see how well the exotic could work when tied into a subclass focused primarily on building damage into your melee over time, but through a hammer. Although odd at first, the thrown hammer combined with the exotic actually works out very well for how continuous but risky the place that you get yourself into becomes. Simply throwing your hammer at a minor enemy is enough for you to one shot them and then gain a stack of warm flames to activate which also allows you to get a health regen boost from picking it up as well. From there you can repeat the process as many times as you like and the results will be the same, a big boom with benefits. The subclass in the perk works similar to how Code of Juggernaut works, where as long as you get a kill with said powered melee ability, you'll get a ton of benefits coming your way and don't have to worry about needing to constantly refill them back up again, since both parties allow the user to naturally activate the ability without having to charge anything. In case of the Throne Hammer, you just need to collect it before it disappears. For how weird the ability is, it is one of the most effective and fun ways to clear large groups of mobs out with no effort. It is honestly bizarre not seeing this type of build more often in the open because of how simplified the build is for all. The benefits alone make using the build viable when you need to quickly mop up before being swarmed, but you also have to remember that the build allows full customization for what you want to do next. No specific weapons or mods need to be dedicated to the melee slot alone, as just the basics of acquired, like an elemental well mod or the strength mod, etc. From this, you can mix and match your loadout without deviating away from the core of the build. This is something I know many players will be looking for when they don't have the mods or weaponry to follow, but with the openness of the build, you can still have fun in your own way. For weapons, we're going to be building into the explosive effects the build already has by utilizing the Energy X level mod to further enhance the explosive weaponry on hand. Now, do please remember no specific weapon is required here as the basis of the build is complete. What weapons you choose next is down to you, but I will explain my reasonings for my choices. For primary, I am once again using the Ignition Code with Blinded Grenades, Ambitious Assassin and Danger Zone as it will help with stopping enemies movements and allow me an easier way to net multiple kills with my hammer or other weapons on hand. Let's be honest, the Grenade Launcher is a wonderful tool to add to any arsenal for their damage and special perks alone, catered towards simplifying most content. Ignition Code allows me to set up the zone I am in into my own advantage and allow me to break up fights so I can easily gather ammo or take out the biggest threat there, or even stun them so I can create a safe passageway. All of those examples is how the weapon will fit into the build, as the core issue the build will offer is losing your hammer and not being able to get said hammer back. 
Sometimes we'll throw my hammer into a large group of enemies who will be struck by it, but will quickly recover from the initial attack. Now, as you'll probably see, this doesn't end well for me or anyone, as I then become surrounded by a swarm of very angry enemies. With my grenade launcher though, we can in a way prevent this from happening, thanks to the blinding grenade's effects. This will not only provide us time to recover, but also damage those affected by the blast, which overall is going to help us in the long run. For our secondary, I'm using the Sunshot Hand Cannon, but this can be swapped for any solo weapon that rolls Firefly or Dragonfly, such as Vision of Confidence, Hung Jury, Stars in Shadow, Ace of Spades, etc. Sunshot, on the other hand, is a fantastic weapon that has built-in Dragonfly that can work from body to headshot kills. This is one example as to what makes the weapon a lot more better to use compared to any other offered, as they all require headshots to proc, and although that's easy to do, not all the times your shot will be as accurate as you would like it to be. A shot shot allows the user to aim where they please and still get the full effects there and then. On top of that, the weapon works well with the Energy Excellent mod, so the explosive damage will be a lot more stronger than normal. And this will link back into a mod I'm using called Elemental Armaments, which will provide me an elemental wall upon certain elemental weapon kills. With both of these in hand, I can use the explosion to get more damage against a group of enemies and have a chance for a wall to drop, which I can then use to refill my abilities back up again. So while we have the hammer to use, our secondary will be causing even more havoc as well. For heavy, I've chosen to use the crown splitter sword with Tyler's blade and surround it. This will be the steamroller of damage when up against bosses or ultras on the field. Just one heavy attack is enough for you to either one shot or take a large chunk of health away from a boss like it was nothing. All this is only achieved if you have the energy excellent mod available, as without it, I highly doubt you'll be able to pull that same damage off again. As the weapon is very limited to where it'll be used, you don't have to tie yourself down to using just the following weapon. Like I said, if you have a weapon with Dragonfly, such as the Swarm, even though it's Arc, or a heavy solo weapon like the Code Duello rocket launcher, those are completely fine to main as well. For the stats, only three key areas are of need for focus, which is recovery, strength and discipline. However, these areas are actually covered by the mods being used, which will aid us further for how the build will play out over time. We do also have these subclass perks as well, so honestly, not too much focus is going to be required, but just enough to keep us afloat. Discipline will allow us to throw our grenades more, which will allow us to break up engagements, increase our stack of warm flames, and produce elemental wells when needed. For this area, I aim for 70 as I plan to use my grenades in conjunction with my hammer and grenade launcher to prevent myself from getting surrounded. We have the Elemental Orders mod as well that will grant us a well upon a grenade kill and also provide us energy from collecting said well. This will feed back into itself to allow us to have a half to near full grenades available at all times, and this also links into Elemental Armaments that will work from our solo weapon kills. These two mods will be the bridge to fully replenishing our abilities as we go, and since this can be done on a continuous basis, we don't have to worry about ever running out of energy as long as we get a kill of course. Recovery wise will be important depending on activity, but since the build will be used in less challenging environments, we don't need to worry so much as to how high this area needs to be. Aiming for 50 should be enough if you play it safe and smart, as you can activate the Tyler's Warrior perk from your subtree as long as you get hit or kill from an enemy, which will briefly get your health regen going. On the safe side, I have added the Well of Life mod to the build so that every time I collect a well, we are granted a short period of increased regen. This will greatly help you when you get into the thick of things and don't have time to stop moving. Lastly, we have Strength, and at 50, this will be enough for the rest of the mods to play their part. Since the Throne Hammer can be collected at any time with no drawbacks, we can be lax in this area. But just to be safe though, I've added the 1 2 finisher mod, which will grant me a full melee back upon finishers, as long as I give up 1 6 for my super. We also have the Strike and Light mod that, when charged with light and have a full charge of melee, can allow us to produce orbs of power for our teammates, which is a nice way of helping them out in the long run. Now, as we have covered the main topics of what makes the setup, here are the mods we have and how they will overall affect the build. For head, we have Discipline, Ashes to Assets times 2, an Elemental Orders mod. Arm, we have Overload Hand Cannon, Unstoppable Grenade Launcher, an Elemental Armaments mod. Chest, we have Strength, Curse of Damner times 2, and Charge of Light mod. Leg, we have Recovery, Innovation, 
Grenade Launcher Scavenger and Well of Life mod. Mark with a minor strength, 1 2 finisher, NG accelerant, and striking light mod. Now, as you're already familiar with the Code of the Juggernaut version from last time, the difference between the two isn't too much of a change that requires you to fully relearn how the build works, which is great as that's what my endgame goal was for designing the build. I want to show you the many options and choices made available to the user for how they can build around the one exotic through the many subclasses and subclass trees made available. As you can see, the only thing that changes the build is the subclass itself and the mods, which is affected by severance. Changing the subclass will change how you use your melee, but at the end of the day, you will still use your melee as the core design of the exotic, while mods can actually be left how they are as no matter what subclass is being used, they will still work as intended, except for the ones that focus on specific elements or setups. Just like the Stasis version and the Arc version, though they all have different mods from time to time, they all still keep the design of the build in mind. This is why the build is very useful for those that want one build, but has many roles within it. Taking a look at the build, your hammer will be the tool that will bring complete and utter chaos onto all enemies touched by it. As the exotic now procs on the hammer and not yourself, you can throw your hammer at a large group of enemies from a distance and as long as you get a kill, that one kill can lead to multiple other kills or even weaken them for you to get in and finish them there and then. And the best thing about this is that you can repeat this as many times as you like without anything holding you back as the hammer will fully recharge if you collect it. This is great as you can fully live out the dream of being a hammer bro without ever needing to touch your weapons. Getting a solo ability kill will increase your damage via the War Flames perk and at times 3 can allow you to one shot mages, shield the enemies or take out one third of a roaming ultra's health. Of course using a hammer all the time won't be the best of choices especially when you get pelted out with projectiles. That's where our weaponry will come in handy as we can blind enemies via our grenade launcher and then use our secondary to mop up kills. In the process we may get a well or our orb of power to drop which will activate certain mods in our loadout, for example Striking Light or Well of Life. This is pretty much it for the build. You can use a hammer to cause large AoE attacks at those it's affected on, but also causing more AoE damage via your weapons. You can use this build in whatever activity you have in mind except for most endgame content like Dungeon, Raids or Master Tier Nightfall. Anything challenging or requires enemies to be more tanky is where the build will fall short, which of course is obvious. I don't believe these type of builds can ever be used for end games since the risk reward is lacking. However, where it succeeds the most is activities chuck full of enemies at once, like strikes, gambit, or override missions. These are the content the build shines in the most, and although you may have to fight for your kills at time against your teammates, you have one advantage that others don't. Your melee explodes, theirs don't. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you on the next one.